Now it's done, brother, can you spare a dime? Once in khaki suits, gee, we look swell. Brother, Can You Spare a Dime, written by Yip Harburg, son by Bing Cosby, Cosby, here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. President Obama visited Capitol Hill yesterday to urge Republican lawmakers to support his economic stimulus plan. The House is scheduled to vote tonight on the $825 billion proposal aimed at creating 4 million jobs and giving individuals and businesses an infusion of cash. Obama devoted nearly three hours to separate closed-door meetings with House and Senate Republicans, but many GOP lawmakers remain unconvinced. The bill's expected to pass in the House today, with a vote largely along party lines. The Senate's expected to consider a separate bill next week. Obama's trip to Capitol Hill came on the heels of major U.S. companies announcing plans to cut more than 75,000 jobs Monday, hitting almost every corner of the labor market. Meanwhile, the Senate confirmed Tim Geithner as Treasury Secretary this week by a 60 to 34 vote. 30 Republicans voted against Geithner, along with Republican Senators Russ Feingold, uh, Democratic Senators Russ Feingold, Tom Harkin, Robert Byrd, and Independent Bernie Sanders. Senator Sanders joins us now from D.C., independent U.S. senator from Vermont, elected to the Senate in 2006 after serving 16 years in the House. He's the longest serving independent member of Congress in American history. We welcome you to Democracy Now! Good to be with you. Why did you oppose the confirmation of Tim Geithner? Well, Tim Geithner, to my mind, uh, is more of a part of the problem that got us to where we are today rather than the solution. Uh, Geithner was actively involved in the Clinton administration in terms of the deregulatory efforts when he was head of the New York Fed. He was there when uh, City Corps and other groups made very, very reckless uh, business decisions uh, and really did not raise the red flag that had to be raised. So I happen to think that Obama is off to a very good start, with one exception. I worry very much about the Treasury Department and the continuation of policies which in many ways got us to where we are today. Bottom line here is Wall Street has done a terrible, terrible disservice, to say the least, to the American people. Their greed, their recklessness, their illegal behavior is causing suffering for tens of millions of people all over our country today, putting us on the verge of a depression. We need a very deep investigation, and we need to hold those people, those crooks, those people who just were incredibly greedy uh, and reckless, we need to hold them accountable. Uh, I am afraid that Geithner was more a part of that problem than the solution, so I voted against them for that reason. Did you meet with President Obama yesterday when he came to the Hill? No, he met with the Republicans. Uh, Larry Summers, the chief economic advisor. Well, Larry is, is a, I've known Larry for many, many years, uh, but Larry also worked under Bob Rubin. And that whole, you know, when we talk about uh, how we, where we got to where we are today, it is absolutely appropriate to cast a lot of the blame on Alan Greenspan. Certainly, Phil Graham, certainly the Bush administration has been horrendous in terms of their deregulatory fever, their belief that if we just give these guys on Wall Street whose whole life is based on greed. We take away all regulations that somehow or another, they're going to do the right thing and create prosperity for all Americans. I think you've got to be pretty off the wall to believe that. But I have to say, it was not just Alan Greenspan and Phil Graham and George Bush who held that view. There were a number of people in the Clinton administration who held that view as well. So I have had some concerns, and that's why I voted against Geithner about the appointments that President Obama has made uh, in that area. Um, the stimulus package, uh, can the House voting on it now, uh, the Senate will get it in a few days. Well, this, I think, is a very bold act on the part of President Obama. Uh, it is going to be somewhere around $900 billion. I'm not going to tell you that I agree with every single line of it. But bottom line, the goal that we have right now is to prevent this country moving from a deep recession into a depression, which will take us years to get out of. So I think that investing in the unmet needs of America, it's not only our physical infrastructure, our bridges, our roads, our water systems, which have been neglected for so many years. If we invest in rebuilding that infrastructure, our rail system, transit, uh, we can create millions of jobs. But in addition to that, where President Obama has been very clear and very strong. 
He understands that the potential for enormous job growth over the next decade lies in breaking our dependency on foreign oil and fossil fuels, dealing with uh, the greenhouse gas emission crisis and global warming, moving us to energy efficiency and sustainable energy. In this bill, Amy, and people should take a look at it, we don't know what the final product will be until next week, but what came out of the House is not only a huge investment in our infrastructure, a huge investment in energy, we're talking about billions of dollars going to protect our most vulnerable Americans, significant increase in food stamps, other uh, programs to help those people who are falling through the cracks, massive investments in education. We have the highest rate of childhood poverty in the industrialized world. Our child care system is a disaster. This uh, stimulus package puts billions into Head Start, billions into child care, billions into making it easier for uh, middle class and, and, and working class families to go to college. So I think the stimulus package is a significant step forward in changing the national priorities of America so that we start paying attention to the middle class and working families of our country and in the process create three to four million jobs. Independent Senator Bernie Sanders, you voted against the more than $700 billion bailout, unlike